I'm going to show you three different ways to set up your charcoal grill that'll work for almost any cooking situation, all the way from low and slow to searing hot. The snake method is the go-to, no accessories required way to cook low and slow on your Weber kettle. And it's really easy to do, it just takes a little bit of work to set up. The charcoal snake is made by strategically stacking charcoal around the outer edge of the grill so it burns like a big fuse and keeps your grill at consistent temperatures. People have different formulas for the right amount, but I go with two layers of two side-by-side -side briquettes topped with a single row of charcoal, which keeps the perfect amount of charcoal lit at any given time. As you stack them, lean them up like dominoes so that way they would fall towards the unlit coals to keep it from burning out. The length depends on how long you want it to cook, and since I'm cooking a pork butt, I had the snake go about two-thirds of the way around. You're in for about five minutes of work, but it should provide worry-free cooking after that. I added a few chunks of hickory at the beginning of the snake to burn when the meat is most able to absorb the smoke. Adding a drip pan will keep your grill clean and give you a spot to add some water to keep the meat from drying out and it enhances the smoke ring which is super important. You could light the snake by lighting a dozen briquettes in a chimney but it's just as easy to use a fire starter at one end and cover it with about a dozen coals. Light the starter but it isn't time to put your food on just yet. Let the charcoal light and the smoke clear for just a little bit. Once you have about a dozen briquettes lit, you can put the lid on and let it come up to temperature. I started at lower than normal because I knew the sun would come out and heat up the grill and I wanted it to be between 250 and 275 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're looking for vent settings, half open on top and the bottom is a good place to start. And you put your meat on and relax. Now that the pulled pork is cooking low and slow, let's grill up some burgers. There's lots of different ways to set it up, but they all rely on the principle of indirect cooking. That's where we have a cool side with no coals and a hot side with coals underneath it. That makes it so that way if things get too hot or out of control, you can put it over on the cool side until things calm down and you avoid burning dinner. This method works really well for roasting things like whole chicken or pork loins or direct grilling burgers and chicken thighs. It can work for steak, but you gotta do a couple of tricks that'll show you. For burgers, I'll start off with a half a chimney of charcoal and spread it out in an even layer in the kettle. If you stack the coals higher, you're going to have more heat but less cooking area. A single layer is usually enough to direct grill burgers, but you're going to need twice as much for steak. One big benefit is that the fat and juices fall down on the coals, burn up, and add to the grilled flavor of the meat. And when it comes to burgers, a big benefit is that you can put the burger on the cool side, let the cheese melt without overcooking the meat, and you can remove it at just the perfect moment. Direct grilling is great, but sometimes you need more power. Did you know that the heat from a fire is inversely proportional to the square of the distance away from it? Let me say that in a different way. The closer you are to the fire, the hotter it'll be. And if you cut the distance in half, you'll end up getting four times the searing power. And that's huge when you're trying to get a steakhouse quality crust on your steak. This is an accessory free method for searing a steak and all you need is a couple of logs. And you probably have these lying around anyway because of all the smoking that you're doing. The logs act kind of like a basket and hold the charcoal back, which raises it up higher to the grate so you get an amazing sear. Three quarters of a chimney of lit charcoal is usually enough, but you can move the logs around a little bit, have more or less space depending on what you're cooking that day. If you're using this method, wait to put your grill grates on until you're ready to cook. The grates can get really hot and instantly burn your meat and you want to have an even crust all the way around. A minute or so per side is the way to go and the first flip is going to burn off the moisture and you'll start to see the sear on your second or third time over the fire. If the steak isn't an even thickness, you can put the thicker part over the fire to keep things cooking evenly. And if you haven't hit your target temperature, putting the steak on the indirect side with the lid on will allow you to come up to temperature slowly so you don't end up with a well done steak. And I really shouldn't call it well done because at that point you done messed up. As you can see, I got really good results on a cheap London broil that was packed with flavor. And there is one really important cooking method that I didn't talk about and that's how to grill pizza. And you're gonna to wanna to check out this video where I dial in exactly how to do it on your Weber kettle. 